Sales to Capital Ratio, a complete animated guide. The sales to capital ratio, also known as the capital turnover ratio or sales to working capital ratio, is an efficiency ratio. The sales to capital ratio tells us how efficiently a company can turn $1 of capital into $1 of revenue. It relates to the return on invested capital metric, and it allows us to take the ratio and show the impact on the company's cash flows. Before going forward, let's talk about the return on invested capital for a moment. Return on invested capital allows an investor to measure the impact on each dollar invested in the company and how that converts to growing revenues. Invested capital contains many parts, including debt and equity. Those are the tools that help grow the revenues of a company. Take debt for a moment. Adding debt gives the company extra cash to grow its revenues by buying more assets that drive its revenue. For example, if a company uses debt to build out its network of 5G small packs around larger cities, in the case of Verizon, that spending allows the company to offer new and additional services to its customers. Those new and additional services can help Verizon grow or retain its user base and drive more revenue. The addition of new debt, especially at current low rates, allows the company to create more value for less than the reinvestment cost. To calculate the return on invested capital, we need a few inputs. Operating income, income taxes, all of which become NOPAT, or net operating income after taxes, shareholders' equity, book value of debt, cash and cash equivalents. So, for example, the ROIC for Verizon for the year ending 2020, taking the numbers from the latest 10K, Operating income, $31,399. Income taxes, $4,427. NOPAT, $24,051.63. Book value of debt, $122,948. Shareholder equity, $69,247. And cash and cash equivalents, $22,171. Let's put that together with the following formula. ROIC equals NOPAT divided by debt plus shareholders equity minus cash. ROIC equals $24,051.63 divided by $122,948 plus $69,247 minus $22,171, equaling 14.14%. For a deeper dive into this all-important metric, please check out our articles at einvestingforbeginners.com. How to Calculate the Sales-to-Capital Ratio Calculating the sales-to-capital ratio is a simple process. The ratio is sales-to-capital ratio equals sales divided by invested capital where the inputs are sales or revenues, invested capital, debt, shareholder equity, cash and equivalents. Let's take a look at the sales to capital ratios of the big three of the telecom sector, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. First up, Verizon, and I will pull up the 10K and locate each of the items to calculate the ratio. We are pulling the highlighted numbers for our inputs from both the income statement and balance sheet. Revenues, $128,292. Long-term debt, $123,173. Shareholders' equity, $69,272. Cash and equivalents, $22,171. Now, to plug those above numbers into the ratio, we find sales to capital ratio equals revenues divided by invested capital. Sales to capital ratio equals revenues divided by debt plus shareholders' equity minus cash. Sales to capital ratio equals $128,292 divided by $123,173 plus $69,272 
minus $22,171. Sales to capital ratio equals $128,292 divided by $170,274 equaling 0.75. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, now I will do the same for both AT&T and T-Mobile so we can compare all three companies. Revenue? $171,760. Debt? $175,977. Shareholders' equity? $161,673. Cash? $9,740. Sales to capital ratio? 0.52. AT&T sales to capital ratio. Revenue? $68,397. Debt? $94,709. Shareholders' equity? $65,344. Cash? $10,835. Sales to capital ratio? 0.45. T-Mobile sales to capital ratio. We will cover the impacts a little more in this next section. But Verizon carries the company's highest sales-to-capital ratio compared to all three of the big telecoms. If we look at their ratios and compare them to the industry average of 0.84, all three are lower than those averages. Let's look quickly at the sales-to-capital ratio of some bigger names in the market, the biggest market caps. Apple, 3.56. Amazon, 4.13. Microsoft, 2.46 Tesla 2.31 Google 1.65 The Impact of Sales to Capital Ratio To assess the impact of return on invested capital, we need to look at how it affects the fair value calculations via a discounted cash flow model. If we look at the sales to capital ratio and compare them to the ROIC of the above companies, I think we might find something interesting. Verizon with an ROIC of 14.14. Sales to capital, 0.75. AT&T with an ROIC of 6.76. Sales to capital, 0.52. T-Mobile, ROIC of 3.80. Sales to capital, 0.45. And then, if we compare the above largest market caps, we see Apple with an ROIC of 25.94 and sales to capital of 3.56. Amazon with an ROIC of 12.40 and a sales to capital of 4.13. Microsoft, ROIC is 29.40, sales to capital 2.46. Google, with an ROIC of 22.51, sales to capital 1.65. The above charts highlight the importance of efficiency. If we look at both charts, we see their higher sales to capital ratio indicating companies that are more efficiently using their free cash flow to grow their business value. To put that into a little context, for every 75 cents in additional revenues Verizon creates, it takes $1 to create. Amazon creates $4.13 of additional revenue per $1 of reinvested capital, an efficient company. For example, Verizon has a higher ROIC in sales-to-capital ratio, indicating the company is doing a great job of growing revenues from its debt and equity. And then, if we look at Amazon, they are doing a ridiculously good job of growing revenues from its invested capital, compared to companies such as Google and Microsoft.